Welcome to Let's Talk About Real Estate, the podcast for real estate agents everywhere. You are now part of a group of real estate agents and entrepreneurs who want to make a difference in their lives. People who are looking for ways to create hacks into the real estate profession in order to make more sales and at the same time have more time off. Agents are realizing that the old ways simply aren't working for them anymore. They are working far too many hours and most don't enjoy a work-life balance. Get ready to explore ways to hack your real estate life. I'm Lisa B. So to give listeners a background about you, you've been ranked number two REB in uh, REB's top 100 agents for the third year running. You've been a keynote speaker for ARIC. You've had over $4 billion in sales. You've learnt to tango, Ciroc and salsa. (laughs) And I want to see a video of it. I've got so many questions and I'm going to talk really fast because I've got so many questions and I'm so excited about all the things that I want to... (laughs) <laughs> all the things I want to ask you. So I saw, I think it was a Tom Panos interview and you said that I think it was the first 18 months in real estate. You didn't sell very much, right? Yeah. I want to know, do you remember the exact moment or, or very close to it that you made the connection that you connect, connected between the dots that you went like, okay, this is what I need to do. Do you remember the pivotal point or what happened? <laughs> I, I do and I don't. I mean, I, I, I remember the pivotal point and that was, you know, um, soon after, you know, I couldn't, couldn't afford to put petrol in the tank, you know, and um, had to walk home um, and um, going for a bushwalk with Cherie and, um, and she asked me, um, look, how are we going? Um, at that stage, we were still just dating, though we'd been together for uh, several years. Yeah. And um, I, I couldn't, couldn't sum up anything positive to say and I didn't want to bullshit to her. Um, so uh, I gave her what I felt was the most positive version of the truth that I possibly could. And that was, uh, darling, we're going backwards, but not fast. Right. Um, <laughs> That's a good way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> well, she burst into tears. She told me she loved me, but she still burst into tears. So, um, uh, cause you know, we, we were kind of both in uh, boots and all of that stage. Um, yeah. uh, not, not, I mean, she was still in architecture back then, but it was at that moment that, that I realized, look, you know, um, uh, things had to change as, as rapidly as possible and okay. um, and that I couldn't afford to learn any more um, uh, difficult lessons um, myself so I needed to leverage from from other people who'd already been there and done that mm-hmm. and um, have absolutely no ego about um, uh, you know putting into place things that others were doing better than me and I felt mm-hmm. that um, I was at the stage in my career where um, you know I was I guess that blank canvas and so I felt, look, just do what somebody is better than me is doing until I get to a stage where I might be as good or better than them. And then I can start to, to be creative if I want. But up until that per- period of time, um, mm-hmm. just do what they do. So what did you do? Did you invest in training? Did you get a mentor? Did you just watch what others were doing? Like, what did you do? Well, it's, it's an interesting thing because I'd, I'd, um, I'd always been really highly invested in, in training and development. And indeed, part of the reason why I was... Um, why financially I'd gone backwards so so badly um, was that for the first uh, for the first twelve to eighteen months, um, uh, though I knew how to sell things because I you know had that background in sales mm. and, and advertising and encyclopedia sales even some um, of the hardest sales encyclopedia sales. yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I, yeah. I, I always felt like I knew how to sell things because mm. uh, I've been doing it in one way shape or form since, since about seven years of age when I was selling cats down at trash and treasure cats um, really yeah it's, it's a whole other story don't worry it was my job <laughs> to be able to find the kittens a good home that's a whole other thing don't worry awesome um, yeah. the point is i knew how to sell stuff um, <laughs> I, didn't know what I was doing in real estate and so um for the first 12 to 18 months one of the big things that i, I was doing was any kind of market appraisal that i could get well after about six months any market appraisal that i could get i would ask a senior agent to come in with me mm. um so, and I would give away my commission to them on the proviso um, that I would get to learn what they did. So I'd either be doing 50-50s with them or, uh, mm-hmm. you know, in, in the first sale that I ever made, I said, look, I'll give you all the commission if you can just show me what to do. Um, mm-hmm. And so um, the idea of, um, of learning from others wasn't new to me at that stage. Mm. It was just that I was that fucking desperate by that stage that yes. that's it, uh, the importance of me learning quickly. Yes, I need to eat. I need to put petrol in my car. Yeah. Yes, awesome. I, wasn't, I wasn't exactly the catch of the century. Um, yeah. I was 
Sheree was. Um, well, she saw potential in you. Lucky you could dance. So maybe if you're not a good, maybe that's the lesson. If you're not a good salesperson, learn to dance. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, she must have said something. I mean, I was at the time that, that we were dating. I was renting a sunroom. Um, and I had a fold-out bed. I kid you not, a fold-out single bed, a 1989 Magna. Um, oh. She certainly didn't. Uh, she certainly didn't uh, start dating me for my uh, for my financial acumen or my money. <laughs> well, she saw potential. That's the main thing. <laughs> Started with the dancing. See, that's the lesson. But anyway, so I would imagine to get where you are and and to be a top performing salesperson, you've got to have systems. So I'd really like to, if you can tell me some of the systems that you have. Um, so when you receive an appraisal, so somebody rings and says, okay, you know, can you come out? I'm, I'm considering listing my property. What's your system from that minute? Yeah, well, um, the, the systems part of the whole business was always, in my, you know, in, in my opinion, was always the unsexy bit, the part of real estate that, that didn't excite me. Mm -hmm. And ironically, it was also the part of the business that I needed more work on than just about anything because like, you know, like most salespeople, we love being in front of people. We love the dance, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, <laughs> and, um, and yes, uh, what I didn't realise originally was that it was the very lack of systems and the disorganisation mm -hmm. that was meaning that I could only do a certain number of listing presentations or a certain number of opens, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So becoming systematised was, was a big deal for me. Um, so the first and the most important thing I think uh, I learned. Uh, Thank you for joining the Let's Talk About Real Estate podcast. Now, if you would like to hear the rest of this interview, then join us at realestatetrainingcommunity.com.au, which is www.realestatetrainingcommunity.com.au, where you'll find the rest of this amazing interview, plus loads and loads of other interviews, resources, training, everything you need to be successful in your real estate career. So join us there and we'll see you then.